I want to talk today about a mobilization technique I use, I call facilitated and spontaneous movement. And it's a modification of cranial sacral mobilization called somato-emotional release, SCR work. In the SCR work, I take any body part, like for instance, Jesse's, Jesse's elbow, and you explore which directions of movement the joint uh, uh, motions are directions of ease and which are resisted. And then once one has a feeling for that, one just invites one just invites the limb to move in the direction of ease. And on occasion, on occasion this will initiate a spontaneous movement, which one will then just follow. Here at the moment I'm I'm doing the movements. So I'd say this is facilitated and now the movements at the shoulder are Jesse's, so they're spontaneous. The movements that we're seeing at the elbow are a mixture of her movements and my movements. And in the cranial sacral work, in the SCRs, somato-emotional release work, was really looking almost exclusively for the spontaneous movement. So I'm just following, following the movement that I find here. Some years ago, I was doing an exchange with a wonderful Feldenkrais practitioner, a lady called Christ Christina Ohm, who has since then gone back to Germany. And learning that an awful lot of the Feldenkrais work is a matter of rocking the body, mobilizing the body, moving the body in directions of ease. And I discovered during this that with this mobilization, say, for instance, the patient, say Jesse had, had a problem in her elbow, that once one sets up this moving in the direction of ease, it doesn't really matter whether one's doing facilitated movement or spontaneous movement. It doesn't matter whether I'm directing the movement or I'm just following the movement. That will get very, very comparable therapeutic results. It's possible that where there's a large emotional component to, to the problem, that then the spontaneous movement allows it, us to unwind that, that psychic, that psychic aspect of, of, of the movement. So, the work with the upper arm is, I usually do it with the patient lying down, and I'm going to ask you to lie on your back if you would, Jesse. So, working with the upper extremity, what may be focusing on, on the wrist, on the fingers, on the elbow, on the shoulder, and say the shoulder, one just sees which directions are directions of ease and which are resisted and then just invites the limb to move in that direction of ease. And give a little bit of attention, allow the other joints to move as well. Don't, uh, and don't dictate that it has to be the shoulder. One's trying to, trying to follow the patient's agenda, trying to follow their movement. But as I was mentioning, in terms of working physically on joint pain, say repetitive, repetitive uh, motion strain, it doesn't really matter whether one initiates a spontaneous movement or whether one's just doing a facilitated movement. And it's my impression that this is sort of a 50-50 a movement. If I stop, and Jesse continues, this is Jesse's movement. And we'll do that on the other hand. Feel this, the shoulder will move here. The elbow doesn't particularly want to move, the shoulder wants to move more. And you find out, as a practitioner, you find out whether it's a spontaneous movement or a facilitated movement by, uh, by relaxing and just seeing what's there and just follow what's there. 
And this is, oh, I would say 80, 90 percent, this is Jesse's movement. Would, would you agree, Jesse? Yes. Okay. Now, for repetitive strain injuries in the hand, elbow, shoulder, or almost any joint problem, this technique, facilitating spontaneous movement, is extremely therapeutic. It offers a lot of, of ease. For the head, you hold, you hold the head in your hands and just invite it to move laterally, flexion, extension, rotation. And again, you just follow the movement of ease. And here, more than, more than with, with the upper extremity, I'm really very interested in the patient's movement rather than in, in my rocking. But again, I'm not too concerned that the movement be completely spontaneous as long as it's in the direction of ease, as long as there's no resistance. Certainly don't want to move a painful joint into a pain, into aggravating pain. So it's just following in the direction of ease. I mean, this is a mixture of, of facilitated movement. Now that was very much, that was, that was uh, Jesse's movement that I hadn't been anticipating. This is just her body unwinding, her body unwinding motor patterns. And very often this can have the, you can have a significant release of body armor. The work can become cathartic, though if one's intention isn't to have cathartic work, that's less likely. Now, some patients will very easily be initiated into spontaneous movement. Others will resist it. Jesse's very willing to uh, take over, unwind, let go. To, uh, it's a very positive person who's not afraid of novelty. Uh, so most of this movement is, is her movement, is spontaneous movement. Sitting, they cup the forehead very lightly with one hand, and suboccipitals, that's, let's turn you around, the suboccipital, so on the neck, the hand on the neck, the index fingers, up near the, the base of the skull, it's on, on the neck in the suboccipital muscles. And then, again, I just, with my, with the hand on the forehead, just asking the head, just asking the, the neck where it wants to move, where it resists, and just inviting it to move in the direction of ease. Now this is more of a facilitated movement, and now we're getting into a spontaneous movement. But I'll be asking, so inviting Jesse's neck to move and then it and it does. It sort of complies in that direction. When we get to extension, okay, by weight she brings her head back into flexion. So joint pain and uh, neck pain of all sorts will very often be substantially relieved by this sort of mobilization. So I want to recommend to any of you out there that where you run across clients or friends with upper limb problems or neck problems that you explore this facilitated and spontaneous movement.